to introduce himself to um uh you know John the Baptist. John the Baptist was baptizing people in River Jordan, and Jesus Christ came. And as he came along, he didn't tell him who he was. Everybody were baptized in there. Jesus God also went there. He said, I'm come to baptize. He didn't say, I'm Jesus. I'm the Savior of the world. Bow down to worship me. It is not what you call yourself you are. It is what you are doing. How you present yourself. People will know you. Not by boasting, I'm that. I'm a bishop. I'm that one. I'm a pastor. But what you are doing and what you say that people should do after you, that is whom they believe you to be. Jesus Christ did not bring his mother to tell them who he was. He came to baptize. But John the Baptist pointed out, he said, this one that is coming, he's a child of God, he's a master to deliver you, he's a master to set the whole world free. Jesus Christ, John the Baptist told them like that. Then after Jesus Christ had baptized, the Holy Spirit said and told John the Baptist, he just said with a voice from heaven, he said, this that man is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. He said, in whom I am proud of. God said he's proud of Jesus. Can somebody be proud of you? Can Jesus be proud of you? Can this nation be proud of you? Can Africa be proud of you? Can your, your family be proud of you that you are a Christian? Amen. Amen. They were called Christian because of the way they behave. Can we find Christianity in your dressing, in the way you behave, in the way you talk? Can we find Christianity? Amen. Amen. Let's go to another place. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Let God be proud of you as a Christian. Amen. Jeremiah 3, verse what? Verse 15. Verse 15. Let God be proud of you as a Christian. Let God be proud of you as a Christian. Many of you came in respect of, you know, our daughter, peace in Minnesota for the birthday. But he said, he said, God planning that you are going to be here, you are going to be here, then you will, you will listen to me. Amen. Amen. Hello. Hi. And if I didn't advise you concerning the word of God, then I have faith. If you are there, please read for me. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. So that we will save time. Oh, glory to God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Who you are, sir? For the benefit of those of you here, I say praise the Lord. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. In my own Bible, you know, different Bible with different English languages. Amen. Now, with different English language. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 3, verse 15, yeah. Our sister said, I will give you a shepherd. My Bible said, yeah, the same thing, because shepherd means pastor. Glory to God. Jeremiah 3, verse 15 says, yeah. He said, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. God said, I will give you pastor." That we feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yes. With knowledge and understanding. If a pastor doesn't tell you the truth, no matter how he pets you, he is dragging you to hell. Many of you may not like me for the past six months I have been preaching some kind of different messages now. You may quarrel with me, quarrel with my family. Now there's Papa. If I don't tell you like this, ladies and gentlemen, God can help you responsible, but when I tell you, God will hold you responsible. Why God is having confidence in me? He said in verse this, I will give you pastors according to my heart. We shall feed those the church member. The year, according to the according to your knowledge, I will get God member. The angel of God is with me. I am going to heaven. I did not bring church from heaven. I am going without a charge. And so if you, if you like, believe. If you like, don't take it. This is the word of truth. If you hear me say amen. amen. And I told you last Sunday in the book of Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 4 to 11. And I encourage some people to cover their hair and at the end result they obeyed by kneeling down and I forgave them and all that. Good. God is 
happy with you for doing that. But it is this standing that when you come to the house of God for prayer as a woman and your hair is not covered, ladies and gentlemen, you are finding yourself swimming to hell, you are disobeying the commandment of God. This is the pastor of God's whole mind that he has said, I should tell you the revelation in the spirit going on as a child of God. If you hear me say amen. amen. If you read Leviticus chapter 29, Leviticus chapter 19, Leviticus 19, verse 28. How do you know that? Verse 28. He said, As a man, you should not bring tattoo in your body. Hello. You should not put tattoo in your body as a man. As a woman, you should not put tattoo on your body. The kind of hair you carry should be a decent hair. Amen. Amen. Then it's not with dreadlocks. Amen. You cannot go and father that one. He said you should dress decently as a man. So as a woman out their home, that is how a man out their home. Woman problem here that is exposing their body is their trouser, which is a sin against God. Then the man oh is concerning the way he dressed on his head. But man, most of the time, is decently dressed. But there are other ways that is not decent concerning the man. Which God said, I will give you the pastor concerning your my whole heart. If you hear me say amen. Praise God. Are you in the house of God? John 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 32, please. We may not like the truth, but God said we should preach the truth. Verse 32 of John 8. He said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, it shall make you do what? Free. Any word you hear is not make you free, it's not the truth. The thing that set the man free is the truth. And so that is why the, the healing power of God is, is truth. When the healing comes upon anybody that is bound, the power of God will visit him, he will set him free. That is the true power of God. But the one that puts you in bondage, which is the devil, is a lie from the middle of hell. The one that can send you to the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ said, repent. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. That is the truth of God's word. That is the truth of God's word. Of God's word. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So if you have not repented from your sin, then the person will finally find himself in hell. Praise the Lord. With the few time I have, ladies and gentlemen, if I did not tell you this one, God will hold me responsible. But when I say it, that you are, up, you, are, you are finally here in the house of God, I will not be opportune to come to your house to tell you. You may not open the door for me, but thank God you respected God this morning. You are in the church. This is the opportunity for God to pass this message to you. If you hear me say, Amen. Amen. Matthew 4, verse 17, please. Let's read. Matthew 4, verse 17. Amen. Amen. From that time, are you there, please? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's already here. It's not trying to come. It's already in your hand. So when you believe, you have everlasting life. If you don't believe, you go to hellfire. Because the kingdom of heaven is already at hand. Is the kingdom of God is at hand? Is the kingdom of God at hand? Yes. Say so the kingdom of God is here. So the kingdom of God is here. So the kingdom of God is here. Kingdom of God is here. Okay. Let God be proud of you as a Christian. God is happy when you are a Christian. But the place you are, He wants you to show the light to the people there that you are a Christian. Hello. And a Christian have this mode of dressing, and a Christian have this mode of talking. And a Christian has this mode of working with people. If you don't have those qualities of the mode of dressing and working with people and talking, then we, you need to amend and be born again. Hello. Amen. Amen. Now, like we read in the Bible in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, he said, I will give you a pastor after my own heart to speak to you. There are some pastors that are representing them who have buried some of their wives in the altar. Some have buried little children in the altar. They are everywhere. Don't think about Nigeria. Nigeria is too far. You know, power in Mallorca, they are here. You are thinking Nigeria. Don't think Nigeria. They are here in Europe. 
So my in, in America, so my job, our neighbor here, France, they bury things in the altar in order for them to get members who will give them money. This is not a pastor after God's oh my. But the pastor that will tell you the truth and will tell you, they tell them, don't tell them that one now, so that you don't go lose members for your church. That is the pastor of the devil. But the one that will tell you, Pastor, preach the word. This is the word that God has want us to hear so that we can enter eternal life. No matter the member we have, God will feed us, man of God. Since you are not the one that did you die on hunger, for you to preach the word of God. I have not died on hunger. I have not been working many years now. God must find a way to feed me. Prepare to bring 20 flat, but if God bring the money, I can build. But if the money is not there, I will not do wayo, I will not do charm, I will not do things so that I can get money. Are you hearing somebody? I will remain who I am. Say your name, but remain who you are. Remain who you are. Remain who you are. Be proud of yourself as a Christian. Listen, why the word of God need to come to you? God said He will give you pastor after His word. Jeremiah 3.15. Don't forget that. Now we are in 2 Peter 3 verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 8.8. 8, he said, be love, be not ignorant of this one thing. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, many believers are ignorant of the word of God. That is why pastors that God has sent, after God's so heart, is teaching you out of your ignorance, to come out of your ignorance. That what you don't have, that we need to tell you what you have to repent from. Amen. Amen. And so because why? Many Christian believers are ignorant of the word of God. As they close the church, they dump their Bible in their shelf. On Sunday, for year, for year, they are looking for the Bible. And if you are still looking for your Bible as a Christian, you are not a Christian yet. You should put it where you can see it. Some will be in your bag. That you should be having more than three Bibles as a Christian, more than two. Not one you are looking for. No. One should be in your bag you are carrying to work. Another one should be in your shed near your TV. Another one should be close to you in your bedroom. As a believer, it should be spread everywhere. Hello. You don't look for it because you are a child of God. Be not ignorant. When you are ignorant of the word of God, you will not know the truth. So, many of you that are ignorant, we are not talking to unbelievers, we are talking to Christians. There are many Christians who don't read their Bible. And so, some pastor that doesn't want member to run away, they package whatsoever they like. He said, hey, this one, this one is too open. If I preach one, they will run away. No, let me, let me, let me package this one. They package virus. Computer call it virus. They package virus for you. And so, at the package virus for you, at the end of God, we come and say, error, 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 error. Because, because why the word of God they are preaching there is not the true word of God. But when you are preaching the word of God, the true one, you are going to see that God will say, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Say, I will know the truth. And the truth will set me free. I will know the truth. And the truth will set me free. Do you like the truth? Yes, Do you like the truth? Yes, Do you like the truth? Yes, Say, tell us the truth. Tell us the truth. That's what I'm saying now. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter, please let's go to Genesis chapter, chapter, chapter 35. Genesis 35, verse 1 to 5. Don't worry, very soon we shall close. Because the Bible said the word is enough for the wise. Hello. So I will tell you the truth. If you like greet me, don't greet me. God is more important than myself. Do you hear me? God is more important than me. Say God is more important. God is more important than me. So what is telling you not to live as a Christian? So if I change the way of my dressing now, how will people look at me? So you are more important than God like that. Hello. If you are thinking about you change your way of dressing. So they can be dressed to look like a Christian believer. That people are going to hate you. You are respecting yourself more than God. But when you cling to the word of God that has been disseminated from the altar here, and you do it, you are going to see that you are respecting God, and God will lift you up. Are you hearing me, somebody? God will lift you up. Have you written uh, Genesis chapter 35? Eh? Have 
Have you written in Genesis 35, verse 1 to 5? This word of God, it did help you for a year. But now be the truth, many pastors will not preach this place. They will go to another place that it doesn't mean anything. But this is the thing that the devil covered, not to mean anything that can lead you to hell. But if you know it, you will be free. Amen. Say, I want to know. I want to know. So that I will be free. So be free. Hello. Bye. People may tell you they are free already. Or down anywhere. Verse 2. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. Change your what? Garments. I told you concerning garments just now, concerning what women need to put on. Hello. I asked our church member that came last time, I said, the way I'm dressing now, is there any way you are seeing any care part of me that can sell right go to hellfire? And I can hear them say no. But let a woman that is half naked come here now. Will be tempted to go to her fire. Starting from the neck, start looking down. You will be tempted. But a woman that is neatly dressed and to show the light of God in the person, who God is proud of as a Christian, you will see the person, you will like to be that this person can send people to hell. Are you hearing me, somebody? If your outward appearance is not justified, your in, in your inward appearance cannot justify. It's a lie. 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 Don't deceive me. Don't deceive God. If your outward outward appearance cannot tell me that you are a Christian, it's a lie. No matter what you preach, believe in prayer and worship. Oh Lord, my God, and the way you present yourself does not prove Christianity. My friend, it's a lie. It's an error. You are not going to heaven. You are going to hell, and you are trying to lead the congregation to hell. But your present presentation must be holy first. Then your heart will be holy to get closer to God, to lead people to heaven. If you hear me say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Verse 3. Change your garment. The garment you are putting on now. The garment that is unholy before God. So if you are having swagger as a, as, a, as a Christian, swagger, they put doing pork, here yeah, they scrape it up, you are swimming yourself as you are committing sin. And it's not a child, it's not a child of God. Amen. You find that one in Leviticus 29, uh, 19, verse 28. That one is there. Verse 3. And let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way in which I went. This man of God, his name is Jacob, he was preparing a church to worship God with his family. And look at what God told him as he was preparing the church. He said, and they gave unto Jacob, verse 3. Uh, where are we now? Verse 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, their ring, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. Are you hearing me, somebody? So the earring and the necklace you are putting as a believer, it make you to commit sin as a child of God. And the ring, the, the Bible, in the Bible, there's nothing like wedding ring in the Bible, please. There's, it, it is we that form it in this world. And the Bible said here that Jacob said, let us throw away all the ring on our hand, the necklace on our neck, and anywhere we have necklace and rings. That is why you see like Jezebel people today, they pack chains on their neck, on their bangles, many here and then look at them, you know that they are not representing Christ. Are you hearing somebody? You know that they are not representing Christ. Jesus said, yeah, he said we should throw away, Jacob said he said we should throw away all these things from our body as a man and as a woman. You may not agree with me, but this is the word of God I'm telling you. You go to uh, 1 Peter again, chapter 3, verse 3 to 10. Is there. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 10. Ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. Your, your the celebration will take over after the preaching. But let me drop you some few preaching before you go. Hello. Hello. And so the word of God says so that all these things should be the things of the past. You should not put it on again as a believer. And so you see the confirmation in First Peter chapter 3, verse uh, 1 to 10, you see there concerning your earring and concerning whatsoever you put on, they are all hidden there as a believer of Christ. So let's go to this place in first, let's run up this one. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 15. These are the qualities of a believer. I've been telling you since. Amen. 
First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 15. If you are there, say I'm here. Say I'm here. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 15. Let's read. Okay. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall inherit the kingdom, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, 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 means, effeminate means a man who is behaving like a woman, dressing, putting on skin, that's why he means effeminate. If you go to a dictionary, go and find out effeminate, that's what I'm telling you now as a student. Now, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Hello, he said homosexuals, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. Gay. They cannot enter heaven. I heard that in Nigeria, that a man has opened a church, a gay church in Nigeria, and said, You can marry a man, woman can marry a woman. They are finding themselves to go to the fire. Are you hearing me, somebody? Verse 10. No thieves, people who are still stealing, you cheat your neighbor. Different things happen. He said, No conventions, no joker, people who are, who are drinking wine, who are drinking alcohol, they are there. No revelers. No extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, if you are still drinking beer here, yeah, and you are saying that I'm a member of that church, you are a member of Satan's church going to hell. The church may be good, but you yourself, you are not clean enough to call upon God. So pray for you to leave him. If you cannot sacrifice that alcohol because of the kingdom, then that alcohol, people that are qualified to go to where they are going to, that is where you are dragging yourself to. Amen. 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 The Bible says that alcohol can destroy you. There are people who are practicing this one, they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Hello. Verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Hello. Amen. Amen. Let's read verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of the Christ? And members of Christ, shall I then take the member of Christ and make them the members of an adult? God forbid. When somebody is still here and is stand on the road to commit prostitutes, such a people when you are preaching, the next Sunday they may not come. Or they grow and know with you. You know how much I promised my man huh? when I want pay, huh? Pastor, why are you going to preach like that? No, no, what is it? I promised them. It is not me, it is in the Bible. Please. This is why I ask you, do you like the truth? And the truth is God's word. When I tell you this one, it is not me, it is the word of God. This is what will save you to enter the kingdom of heaven that we are going to. But if you are not prepared to go there, no problem, continue what you are doing. But me, I'm preparing. So that that day, when Jesus Christ shall blow the trumpet, according to 1 uh, Timothy, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, from verse uh, 14 to 18, he said, the Lord shall come, blowing the trumpet, amen, and we carry those people who are ready to the kingdom of heaven. These are the qualities of people who cannot enter he heaven, and these are the qualities of people who can go to hellfire when they come in sin. Hello. I have told you. And the Bible says no fornicators can enter the kingdom of God. Why? Verse 20. As a Christian, verse 20 of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. As of, of chapter 6, verse 20 now. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Hello. God bought you with the precious blood of Jesus. Do you allow the blood of Jesus Christ to just waste like that? Do you allow his blood to wait? Are we, are we joking with Jesus? Are we making fool of him? Galatians 6 verse 7 will say, God is not mock. Galatians 6 7. God is not, a, you can't mock him. Amen. He said, whatsoever a man sow, and that shall he also reap. So if you reap, if you sow righteousness, you will reap righteousness. If you sow purity, you will reap purity. If you sow sin, you will reap sin. Hello. Hi. Let's wind up with this one. Revelation chapter 16 verse 15. So, our topic is still remain. Let God be proud of you as a Christian. Amen. Let God be proud of you as a what? As a Christian, let God be proud of you. Let God be proud of you. 